Now we are also going to look at one more reaction which is very important synthetically and once we go ahead and look at retrosynthesis you will see the use of this particular reaction. So now what we are going to see is how to prepare an alkyne from an alkene ok. So in order to do that what we are going to do is we are going to take the alkene first and then react it with either bromine or chlorine to give us the dihaloalkane right. So let us take an alkene and I am going to add the bromine across this particular molecule ok. So, what we have formed is a dihaloalkane ok. One thing to remember is that this is not a geminal dihalide, it is a vicinal dihalide ok. And what this particular vicinal dihalide can do is it can undergo a reaction called as elimination reaction ok. For now I just want you to remember that this particular dihaloalkane can undergo a successive dehydrohalogenation reaction or rather two successive dehydrohalogenation reactions such that in presence of a really strong base like NaNH2 in the presence of liquid ammonia it can form the corresponding alkyne. So, this is an elimination reaction and we will look at the mechanism later but for now I want you to know this reaction how to go from an alkene to an alkyne via reacting it first with Br2 or Cl2 to give you that dihaloalkane and later on reacting it with a really strong base to give you that alkyne ok. So, now we are going to start talking about retrosynthesis. Remember the goal of chemists to do all these various kinds of chemical reactions is to build new molecules that are useful to mankind right. So, we build molecules that can be used in pharmaceutical industries, we build molecules that can be used in color industries, in food industry and so on and so forth. But what you will see is that most of the molecules that are used in these industries are quite complex, they are big molecules, they have number of carbon atoms with various functional groups attached to it. What we want to do is we want to start building these molecules such that we start from very small building blocks ok. The building blocks here are going to be compounds that contain uh, 2 to 3 carbons or maybe a few more, but the end product is going to be more complex and it is going to result into the formation of a bigger molecule. Now one of the ways to think about is, is to think it backwards in the sense that if you have a big molecule what are the ways to form that big molecule starting from very small building blocks ok. So, what we are going to do is we are going to start thinking backwards ok. And this particular way of thinking is called as retrosynthesis. So, retro meaning backward, synthesis is building right. So, we are backward building the molecule uh, of interest. Of course, we are not going to start with very complex molecules to begin with, we are going to start with very easy examples so that we build this way of thinking or the strategy of retrosynthesis can be mastered before we go to really big and difficult molecules to synthesize. Now, there are a couple of strategies that help us in this retrosynthesis. The first one is that first count the number of carbons in the starting molecule and the end product so that you know how many carbons you need to add to the starting material to really form the end product right. Also look at the functional groups in the end product as well as the starting material because in the end product you are going to result with some functional group and you can think what are the reactions I know to form this particular functional group. From starting material you can think what are the reactions I know of this starting functional group to really end up towards this end product. And if we develop this way of thinking you will realize that it is much easier to think backwards one step back at a time to really form the product in hand. So, what I am going to do is I am going to solve one very quick example here 
and maybe we can solve a few more in the tutorial which emphasizes this retro synthetic thinking ok. So, I am going to start my example with acetylene and I want to do this reaction such that I end up forming cis 3 hexene ok. So, this is my product and this is a reactant or starting reactant ok. Uh, one thing to know is that even though we have shown that arrow it does not mean that it directly goes from acetylene to cis 3 hexene it in fact means that there are multiple reactions in between and together at the end of the last reaction you will end up forming that final product. So, now the way to think about it would be what are the ways you know to form cis 3 hexene right. Remember it is a very typical double bond that has been given here which is a cis double bond and we just looked at a reaction which upon the reduction of a carbon carbon triple bond in the presence of Lindlar's catalyst and hydrogen gas results into the formation of cis 3 hexene. Now, we want to treat it with hydrogen and Lindlar's So, you want to think what is that alkyne that will result into the formation of cis 3 hexene. Now, the answer would be 3 hexyne ok and this 3 hexyne when I treat it with hydrogen and Lindlar's catalyst is going to give you that cis 3 hexene right. But wait we have not yet converted our acetylene to the 3 hexyne right. So, now I want to do a reaction such that it converts acetylene to 3 hexyne. Remember in acetylene I have 2 carbon atoms and in 3 hexyne I have 6 carbon atoms. So, we have also added carbon atoms as the reaction goes. We know a reaction called as an alkylation reaction which adds carbon to an existing carbon carbon triple bond. So, let us say that I can form this 3 hexyne. from 1 butyne right. If I treat this 1 butyne in the first step with NaNH2 and in the second step with this corresponding alkyl bromide since I have to add 2 more carbons I will take ethyl bromide right. It can form 3 hexyne and in fact acetylene if I treat it with NaNH2 followed by ethyl bromide can form 1 butyne right. So, acetylene in presence of NaNH2 and ethyl bromide can form 1 butyne which again when reacted with NaNH2 and ethyl bromide it is going to form 3 hexyne. So, just now we have created a way to go from acetylene all the way to the product which is 3 hexene through multiple small steps right. And one of the analogies that is often given for a multi step synthesis is that uh, let us say that I am going to go to Delhi, I know my end destination, I know my starting destination which is Pune right now, right. What are the ways I can reach Delhi? Now, one of the ways to reach Delhi is via uh, air. So, in order to reach the destination uh, in Delhi, I need to first go from Delhi airport to that destination. But how will I reach the Delhi airport? I will have to start from Pune airport and take the flight to Delhi. How will I reach Pune airport? Is probably I will have to drive from here to Pune airport, right. So, this is one way to get to the destination in mind which is in Delhi, right. I can come up with another way to get there. So, I can probably take a train. So, I can go from Aysar Pune to the Pune railway station and I can then take a train to Delhi, right. And the train station in Delhi, I will have to take further next taxi to go to my final destination. What I am trying to get to is that in order to go from the product in hand from the starting material, there could be multiple synthetic pathways possible. Now, the best synthetic pathway 
is going to be the one that is the most economical, that is the one that results into the maximum yield. It also could be the pathway that is very, very effective such that it does not create more hazardous waste, it could be a green pathway. But depending on your criteria, you are going to see that one or the other pathway will be more acceptable to you as a synthetic chemist. I want to point out that there are multiple ways of answering the same question of the retrosynthesis because what you can see is that in order to reach the destination, you can take multiple routes or multiple ways to get to the final destination. So, we have seen one example of retrosynthesis. Let us now look at some more examples in tutorial, but with this I want to stop with the chapter of reaction of alkynes and really start with substitution and elimination reactions in the coming week. Thank you.